Hey everyone, it's Meg from Creative Cove here. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you step-by-step -step how to build a subscription tracker like this one in Notion. So if you're always losing track of your various subscriptions and you're constantly surprised by those sneaky monthly bills, then I think this tracker is really gonna help you. I'll start by giving you a tour of the tracker so you can see how it works, and then I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to build it for yourself. So currently I'm on the active tab. So this is what's gonna show your active subscriptions. So each subscription will come up as a card, as you can see, and it will give you an overview of the monthly cost the annual cost, the next renewal date, and how you pay for that subscription. So whether it's monthly or annually. We also have an inactive tab. So this is where you can keep track of any subscriptions that you've canceled. So there is a checkbox on here. If I just click on here, there is a checkbox here that says active. So if I click that checkbox, it will disappear from active and that subscription has now been re-added into active. So I think that this is a really, really handy way to keep track of all your subscriptions and it's easy to see how much they're costing you throughout the year. And you can easily move them between active and inactive if you do cancel any. So this subscription tracker is actually something that I created as part of my ultimate finance tracker template. I have a ton of useful stuff on here so you can track all your transactions, you can see how much you have in each account, you can track debt, track bills, set monthly budgets and you can also track how you did so it will actually give you an overspend alert if you do go over budget which is really really handy. If you are interested in this template at all then I will leave a link in the description below to my store but next I'm going to show you how to build the subscription tracker. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in forward slash data database and select database inline and I'm just going to give this a title I'm just going to call it subscription tracker and I'll click on these three dots here and hide the title as it just looks a little bit cleaner without the title. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just click on this tags property and hit delete as it's not something we need for this build and I'm just going to start by adding three subscriptions to the tracker just so that we have some data to work with so let's add in Netflix, Amazon Prime and Spotify. So the next thing I'm going to do is add an icon for each of my subscriptions. So if we just look back on the example, as you can see, there is an icon on each of these that reflects the type of subscription that it is. So feel free to skip this if you don't really care about the icons, but I do think it makes it look a little bit more aesthetic with the icons. So I'm just going to click open next to the subscription and that's going to open up this little page. And then if I just hover up here, it will say add icon then click on the icon that it generates. So you can then either select an icon from the emojis or you can use the icons, which is what I personally prefer to use. So for Netflix, I'm just gonna type in film and select something like this. And I'm just gonna add an icon for the others as well. So these are the icons here that I've chosen. So the next thing we're gonna do is click on this plus button here to add a new property. And the property I'm gonna add is a select property. So I'm just gonna type in select and click on this one. So this one I'm gonna name payment. And this is where we're going to select how we pay for this subscription. So whether we pay monthly or annually. So to add an option, I'm just going to click here on this add an option. And the first option is monthly and the second is annually. I'm then going to select my payment type for the examples we've already got in here. So let's go with monthly for these ones and annually for Spotify. Okay, next I'm going to add another property by clicking on this plus symbol and I'm going to type in checkbox and select this checkbox property. This one I'm going to name active as this is the checkbox we're going to check if it's an active subscription. So if you cancel the subscription, you can uncheck the checkbox. So in this case, I'm going to tick all of them as they're all active subscriptions. But if I did cancel them at any point, I can simply untick the checkbox like this. And I'm just going to make this a little smaller. Next, we're going to add another property by clicking on the plus symbol. And this one is going to be a number property. This one I'm going to name price paid. And just under number format here, I'm going to select the currency. So there is a lot of different currencies in here already. So just select the currency that is applicable to you. I'm just going to use US dollar as an example. So in this column, we're going to input the price that we paid. So if we paid monthly, we're going to input the price that we pay every single month. But if we pay annually, then we're going to input the price that we pay annually. So it's essentially just whatever bill you paid, just put the price in here. So I'm just going to fill these out. So as you can see, I filled those out. So as these two, I pay for monthly, I've inputted the monthly price. But as this one, I pay for annually, I've inputted the annual price. Next, we're going to add another property. So I'm going to click on here and type in formula because we're going to add a formula property. And this one I'm going to name annual cost as this is going to work out the annual cost of the subscription. And I'm just going to click on this formula edit button to bring up the editor. And this little panel is where we're actually going to type in our formula. So we're actually going to use an if statement for this. So as you can imagine, if it is an annual payment, then the annual cost is simply going to be the price that you paid. However, if it's a monthly payment, then it's going to be this price multiplied by 12 as there are 12 months in the year. So I need to come up with an if statement to say if the payment type is set to annually, then just display the price paid. However, if the payment type is set to monthly, then we want to do the price paid multiplied by 12. So to do that, I'm going to type in if 
and open parentheses. First, I need to put in the payment property, which is this select property here. So I'm going to select the payment property here, and that's going to input it into our formula. So I'm going to say if the payment equals equals annually. So I'm just going to type in two quotation marks like this and type in annually. So you do need to make sure that what you type in here exactly matches the word that you've put in payment. So if you write annual rather than annually, just make sure it reflects that in the formula. And just another note, you do need to put in two two equal signs for Notion formulas. That's just the way that Notion formulas work. Next, I'm going to put a comma. And next, I'm going to tell it what I want the formula to display if the payment is set to annually. So in this case, I just want it to display the price paid. So I'm simply just going to click on this price paid property and input that into the formula. So it's now just going to display the price paid if this condition is true. Next, I'm going to write another comma. And we're now going to write our second statement. So I'm going to write if open parentheses, and I'm going to input the property of payment again. And this time it's going to be equals equals. I'm going to put in two quotation marks and inside I'm going to write monthly. So we're saying if the payment here is set to monthly, then what do we want to do? So I'm going to write comma and now I'm going to tell it what I want to do. So in this case, we want our price paid. So I'm going to select that property again and we want to multiply it by 12. So I'm going to put in the star icon like this, which means multiply and 12. I'm going to put another comma. And finally, you just have to tell it what to do if neither of the conditions are met. So I'm just going to put in zero. So I just want it to display a zero if none of these conditions are met. And finally, I'm just going to close the parentheses twice and hit done. So as you can see, it's now working that out for us. So for the Spotify, which was paid annually, it's just pulling through 99, which is what I put as the price paid. And for the other two, it is multiplying the price by 12. The only thing is that it is bringing it up just as a normal number. So I'm just gonna go into number format and change it to the currency as well. So I'm gonna select US dollar. The next thing we're going to do is add another formula property. So I'm going to click on here, type in formula, and this one is going to be the monthly cost. So again, I'm going to click on this formula edit button and that is going to bring up our formula panel. And in this box, we're going to put a very similar formula to the annual cost. It's just going to be the opposite way. So if the payment is set to monthly, then we just want to pull through the exact monthly cost. However, if it's set to annually, then we want to pull through the annual cost, but divide it by 12. So I'm just going to type in if open parentheses are payment equals equals annually and that's inside quotations comma then we want to do the price paid divided by 12 another comma and now we're going to put our second statement so in this case if the payment equals equals inside quotations monthly comma we just want to simply display the price paid comma and again at the end you just need to say what you want the formula to do if neither of the conditions apply so in this case we're just going to put zero so it'll just display a zero and we're going to close with two parentheses to close both of the if statements and click done so again as you can see over here it is correctly bringing up for the ones that are set to monthly it's just bringing through the exact monthly cost and for the one that's set to annually it is dividing that price paid by 12. again i just need to change the number format so i'll just click on number format and change it to us dollar the next thing i'm going to do is add another property so i'm going to click on the plus button and type in date and select this date property so this one i'm going to name renewal date and I'm just gonna leave all the options the same. So this is where we're gonna select when this subscription next renews. So I'm just gonna fill this in for each of these subscriptions that we have. So the next thing I want to do is just add some labels. So if I just go back up to our example on these cards, as you can see, we have these labels which just make the information on the card a bit more understandable. So as you can imagine, if these labels here were not on the card, you may be confused about what these numbers here are and what this date is. So we're gonna add these labels now. So I'm gonna add another property and this one is gonna be a text property. And I'm just gonna name this one annual cost label. So in this box, I'm just gonna write what I want the label to be. So I'm just gonna type in annual cost and I'm also just gonna highlight this and bold it as well, just so it stands out a little bit more. So I do want this to display for all of the subscriptions. So I'm just gonna click on this little blue circle here and just drag it down so it auto fills all of the columns. So that is the annual cost label. I also want to do a monthly cost label. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, add another property. It's gonna be a text property. This one will be the monthly cost label. And this one, I'm just gonna type in monthly cost. I'm gonna highlight it and bold it. And again, I'm just gonna drag that down into all of the cells. And finally, I'm just gonna add one more. So again, text property. And this one is gonna be the renewal date. 
So I'm going to name it renewal date label and in the box I'm going to type in renewal date and I'll also highlight that and bold it and just drag it down all the columns. Okay, so the main thing to know about the labels is that you will need to add these labels into these boxes for every subscription. So if you add a new subscription on here, you will need to add these labels in. Now there is a way that you can automate this so that you don't have to add these in manually every single time. So what you're gonna do is on this little plus new button here, we're gonna click on this little down arrow and click add new template. And this is gonna bring up a page with all of the different properties in here. So I'm just gonna pull to the bottom all of the label ones just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to do is just type in the labels in each of these boxes so it was annual cost and I'm also just gonna make sure that it's bolded as well okay so as you can see I've added the labels in here so what I'm gonna do is just click back and again click on this down arrow so here this one that is labeled as untitled that is the one that I've just created so what I'm gonna do is click on these three dots here and I'm gonna set it as default so this just means that whenever you add a new row to this table this template will be set as default and I'm just gonna select for all views so now if I just go back down here and add another row, let's just say that I have a Canva subscription. If I have a look, I've not done anything, but as you can see, these labels have already been added for me. So because these are being added in the background, I can actually hide them. So I'm gonna click on here and hide them in view. They are still there, they've not been deleted, they're just being hidden. And that just makes the subscription tracker a little bit neater. Okay, so that's all the information we need in the table. So now we're gonna turn this into a gallery view so that it looks a little bit more like the original subscription tracker that I showed you. So to do that, we're simply gonna click on these three little dots here and on layout, I'm gonna select gallery. The first thing I want to do is get rid of all this empty white space. So I'm gonna click on card preview and set it to none. And I'm just gonna click the arrow back here. This view I'm gonna name active because this is where we want to see all of our active subscriptions. And I'm just gonna change the icon as well to a check mark, this one. Next, I'm gonna click on properties and this is gonna show all of the different properties that we just created in that table. So I want to select the ones that I want to show on the card. So I'm gonna start with our monthly cost label. That's the first thing I want to show. Then under that, I want to see the actual monthly cost. So I'll click on this icon here, which is gonna make it show up on the card. Then we want to see the annual cost label, the annual cost, the renewal date label, the renewal date. And finally, I'm just gonna add the payment on the bottom as well so you can see how often you pay. So next I'm just gonna add a filter. So this is the active tab, so it should only show active subscriptions. So to be able to filter out any inactive subscriptions, I'm gonna click on filter and select this active checkbox. And we only want things to show up on this view if the active checkbox is checked. So I'll select checked. Now at the moment, all of these are checked, which is why they're all still appearing. So let's go on this Canva one and unselect this active checkbox. So as you can see, that Canva subscription has now disappeared. So we do just want to create one more view so that we can see all of the inactive subscriptions. So what I'm gonna do is click on this active here and click duplicate. And this one I'm gonna name inactive. And I'm just gonna change the icon as well to a cross. Select this one. So I do just need to change the filter. So I'll click on filter and I'm gonna change it to uncheck. So when the active checkbox is unchecked, and as you can see, it's now bringing up that Canva subscription. And that is it. If you found this video useful, then please give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button as I post new Notion tutorials twice a week. You can also check out my pre-made Notion templates like this awesome finance tracker over on my store. I'll leave a link in the description box below.